here's the second sentence. The eldest son of a glover, he was torn between a life of business and his love for the magic he felt around him. Okay, uh, let me look for the verb first. Verbs, probably. Here's was, auxiliary helping verb with torn, was torn, past tense uh, form of the verb to tear. That's an action verb. Uh, and I'm looking, oh, here's another verb down here, to feel, right there. So, um, it also looks like an action verb. And I, who felt, what felt, Subject, I'm just taking it as it comes to me. Who or what was torn he? There's the subject, there's the verb. Um, now we've... I see some prepositional phrases. Of a glover. Between. And I was going to say between a life, but it's between. That's between. That's two. Uh, between a life and love. Um, so I'll mark it like this and we'll see what I'm doing. But there's a prepositional phrase inside right here. And then there's another prepositional phrase right here. In fact, here's a final one. Lots of prepositional phrases in this sentence. Let's go back to he was torn. He was torn between a life of business and his love for the magic he felt around him. Between is the preposition. Its object is a double preposition. Here's one, life. There's the second. Both objects of the preposition, between. Of business, preposition of, object of the preposition, business, is an adjectival prepositional phrase it's modifying life. And for the magic is another adjectival prepositional phrase, preposition, object, definite article as modifier that is modifying, this whole phrase now is modifying love. His is a little possessive pronoun acting as an adjective for love. Um, A is the indefinite article modifying life as an adjective. Uh, we've got a relatively complicated prepositional phrase here. If I wanted to draw these parentheses in a different way, I suppose I could go like this, start at between, and because all of this is related, I suppose I could go like that. Um, either method denotes what's happening it seems to me and then we've got the question of what between a life of business and his love for the magic etc modifies um, and I think that's adverbial describing the whole thing now this verb modifying the verb how was he torn he was or why was he torn where was he torn between a life of business and his love for the magic he felt around him I'm purposely avoiding this let's get to this he felt around him where did he feel around him here's the preposition there's the object of the preposition this entire thing modifies the verb as adverbial but we've simply got a uh, what a sentence sitting at the end of another sentence uh, that's not what is normal in rule-based grammar in fact, what we have here is a hidden dependent clause. It's that he felt around him. That can be a subordinate conjunction. That can be a relative pronoun. In this case, I think it's a relative pronoun. He felt what? That. I think it's the direct object of this entire clause. Subject, action verb, felt what? Direct object, that. This is a relative clause. This relative clause is acting adjectively. The entire clause now works together, modifying magic. So, in a way, I suppose, we could... Sorry about the squeak. 
draw our second final parentheses here. Uh, not too concerned about that. We've got this opening few words too. I can see what's happening, a definite article modifying, I think I can see it, modifying the son, its eldest son, prepositional phrase, preposition with its object, little modifier, that's modifying son. The entire phrase now, the eldest son of a glover, cut down to just son, is a noun phrase, it's a noun, but it's a noun phrase that is um, modifying the subject. It's a little bit like a, um, an appositive, uh, but we just call that a noun phrase that's uh, opening up the sentence and modifying he. Okay, that's about it.